hi welcome to my channel my name is Brittany and my channel is called Brit's Tips I'm on YouTube every Monday so always come check me out if you are new here I'm sending a warm heartfelt hello thank you so much for being here um, if you don't know anything about me like I said my name is Brittany and a lot of my content is about managing children. Um, I have a degree in early childhood, and so a lot of my content prior, you will see me discussing actual hands-on ways that parents can um, just help manage their children. But today, today I am very inspired to do something a little bit different. Today, I am going to talk about the tension between stay-at-home moms and moms that are in the workforce. And I actually covered this topic on a blog, in a blog post that I posted, and I named it The Stigma Effect. And very untraditionally, I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read this blog that I wrote and that I posted. Um, if you're interested in going to check it out and like reading it yourself or reading some of my other content on my blog, it's called BenderBlend.com. But I'm going to read you my thoughts i think that i get things out better when i write them so i would love for you to comment i would love for you to let me know how you feel um about what i'm expressing and about how i feel about this topic of stay-at-home moms versus working moms and how there's like this undertone of attention there but um yeah i'm gonna jump right into this i'm gonna start reading so let's dive right in the stigma effect this morning, I realized that the stigma behind the term stay-at-home mom has affected how I feel about being one. When we meet people, one of the first things we ask them is, what do you do? Our society separates and classifies people based on their appearance, vocation, and accomplishments. It's easy to miss how dramatically we identify with our titles. Being able to say, I'm a doctor, or I teach for a living, quickly becomes the biggest part of our identity. It doesn't help that most people spend the majority of their time working and in turn constantly reinforcing their self-imposed identity. Going back to what I realized, I can no longer hide behind the title that my degree shades me under. So now when asked, what do you do? I answer, I'm on maternity leave. If I'm being honest, I don't feel proud to say that I'm a stay-at-home mom. Since I was 14 years old, I've been working, earning money for myself, and identifying with the role I was currently playing or the job I was currently working. Now, my husband is the financial provider and I care for our children full-time. For the first time in my life, I'm not fully comfortable with the title I hold. Stay-at-home mom, the term is judged so harshly. It's surprising to me how other women seem to be the biggest critics. I've heard and read comments like these. Oh no, I couldn't stay home all day and do nothing. Or it's foolish to put your career on hold for children. Other women can't relate to being able to afford not to work while others express having absolutely no desire to be with their children all day. For some reason, wearing the title of a stay at home mom is looked down upon rather than honored. There seems to be a misinterpretation that the job is easy. It's not. <laughs> As a mother, it is likely that the majority of the housework is on you. So yes, cooking, cleaning, doctor's appointments, managing household finances, diapers, meal prep, and the list goes on. Not to mention, you have virtually zero time to do anything for yourself. Anything. <laughs> Poop alone, daydream or read, just to name a few things, because you're constantly caring for your children. The mental and physical toll that nonstop childcare can take on a person is underestimated. Most days, stay-at-home moms work 12-hour shifts. We do all of this without having the adult socialization that a nine-to-five job brings you. I've had the experience of working a nine-to-five and now of being a mother who stays home. I can't believe I'm saying this, but in my opinion, staying home is harder. I used to come home from my nine to five and tell my husband, I can't wait to start my own business. That way I can have complete control over my time. It's draining giving the best hours of the day to a job. 
only to get home and have very minimal time for family, let alone yourself. I was convinced that having complete freedom of my time was the way to deeper fulfillment, creativity, and accomplishment. Now that I have it, I have to say, I was wrong. Me being able to stay home and raise my children was a huge goal for our family, and I'm proud to say we accomplished it. In no way am I attempting to play down how rewarding staying home can be. Witnessing our children's progress and building this unexplainable bond with them is priceless. It's also challenging work. As Peter Parker would say, with great power comes great responsibility. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but seriously, when charged with all of your time, you have to learn how to manage it productively. It's not, it's not as easy as you may think. I'm all about time management, organization, and schedules. And yet, without a traditional job, I'm detecting a void in my sense of self-worth. I wrote this blog to shed a little light on the underdog in this argument. Stay-at-home moms are facing more challenges than this judgmental world realizes. Adjusting to being a mother, having minimal adult socialization, and learning how to productively manage you and your children's time is hard work. Hard work that should never be viewed as lesser or beneath any other job. Because yes, it is a job and probably the only one that doesn't provide health benefits or monetary compensation. As I sit here at 2.30 in the day on a Wednesday, I'm watching my children on the baby monitor awake from one of their regular little naps. My free time isn't so free. They need me. I'll leave you with this. The choice to blend being in the workforce or bend staying at home is ultimately up to the individual. No one way is better, and whichever choice you make, work at being proud of your decision and owning it fully. I'm in the process of doing that now. So that was the blog that I posted, and I received a lot of commentary from different mothers about this. So this stay-at-home mom versus working mom is a real thing. It's a real deal tension, and I'm just here to say that it shouldn't be. I just want to say that, like I said before, I've spoken to a lot of moms. At this point, moms on both sides of the fence. And ultimately, what I'm seeing and detecting is that both sides feel very judged. Both sides feel judged. There's stereotypes for both angles. You have moms that are in the workforce and people judge them and look at them and say that they put their career before their families. And then moms that stay home and there's stigmas behind them being lazy. So what I'm trying to say ultimately is that if you really think about it, what's happening is that there's a lot of comparing. Moms are looking at other moms' lives and thinking that they're easier. Ultimately, that's what's happening. You're thinking that someone else's life is easier and not as hard as yours. But ultimately, that is not a good thing to do because you never know someone else's struggle. Being a mom is the hardest thing personally that I've ever done in my life. It's mentally, physically, spiritually draining and i am just here to say i think us moms should bond together more and walk away from all the judgment we should bond together and support each other brit's tip number nine i'm on tip number nine is this stop comparing your life to other people's you never know someone's struggles you don't know what their childhood was like you don't know what their um perfect cookie cutter family is really like. So when you walk around in this place of discontent because you're feeling like you want this, or if only you can get to this level, as cliche as this may sound, I have really found deeper peace in my life with accepting and being happy with where I am. Everything is a, prog is a progressive step um, all goals that you get to, or rather all goals that you set, once you reach them, they're reached, right? And then you're going to be looking around like, okay, what's next? There is real peace in finding appreciation in all the good that you do have currently. So Brit's tip number nine, stop comparing your life to other people's. Your life is your life and you got to push and make it what you want it to be. 
but stop comparing. Social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, people put out what they want you to see. Everybody's fronting. Nobody keeps it real. Stop comparing and just focus on what you want your life to be and then work like heck to make that happen. Thank you for watching Brits Tips. Tune in every Monday. I'm going to have new content and I would love for you to subscribe. I would love for you to comment and I would love to interact with you. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.